Hey hey, I am Izzy Noodles with another redo with commentary. So this time it's the Pirate Princess's turn, which is a pretty simple one, and we'll have less parts than the first time round as you'd most likely expect. So uh, this one's a bit piratey and we've got some differences. So let me show you the inventory. Uh, we've got a telescope for binoculars, fireflies for flares, a papaya is a small med pack, pineapple is a large med pack, and you got your load and your save and your pistols as usual. So now let me show you what's occurring in this area. We've got a gate over there which will be the main section of the game, that's the pirate lair. But we need a key for that and the key is in the bayou section over here but obviously we need a key for that as well. So let's proceed along. So over here there is a pineapple and in this box there is a papaya. So that's a large and a small med pack already. And you can see someone waiting over there. So let's go and see what they've got to say. Oh, a visitor. You don't look like a pirate. What do you want here? The current brought me here. Where are we? Mm -hmm. Nice island to strand on. This is Puerto Corona. Puerto Corona? Oh, the island where the last pirate prince buried his crown, if you believe the legend. Yep, right. And whoever finds it will be prince or princess. But listen, bring me some rum. Maybe then I'll tell you some more. The store is right here around the corner, but the entrance caved in. Take a look in the hut up there. Maybe you'll find something useful. Oh, uh, look around. Okay, so this is Lucia. She gives her name later on in the game, but I will just tell you now that her name is Lucia. And she's given us a few hints of what we can do right now. We're going to have a look in the hut, which is what I will do right now. She's also mentioned that there is a rum cellar that's caved in. So firstly, looking in the hut, you want to be near enough central to the ladder that's broken off at the top, otherwise she just won't grab for some reason. And you can see just in front of her feet there is a very slight tile connection just there, so you want to be approximately right here. And that's how you will grab the ladder, otherwise it can take a few attempts to actually line yourself up. So let's have a look, see what's in the hut. There is a box which is in my way. There we go. There is a chest. And in the chest we have a peg leg and some fireflies. And there is a bug where you can just jump straight out of the hut. <laughs> you have to jump though, you can't just walk through the walls. And now I'm gonna enter the water just here. Just follow it round, it's not long. Okay. Try and climb out. And you've got a sign here which is a hint of what to do. You can interact with trees and coconuts will fall down. Not necessarily coconuts though, so let me just explain. There are crosses on every palm tree here which you can interact with, but not every tree gives you an item. So firstly, this tree right in the corner. So you can see across the way, that's the water where we came from. So interact with this. And you get a coconut on your head and a treasure, which is a secret. The very first secret of the game. So for some reason the treasure comes up in the inventory, but never tells you how many you have. So if you want to keep track, that's in the statistics. And also the next tree that will give you something is this one right by the fence gate thing on the wall. Ah! Ouch! <laughs> that gives you half a coconut. And so if we have a look, we can actually combine the coconut with the peg leg and now we have an improvised shovel. And that's how we actually get into the rum cellar. 
So just pull the lever and we can leave easily or you could just swim back through the water, really doesn't matter. And now we're going straight to the rum cellar which is all the way around here. So we're going to just drop on in and dark patches on the ground like this you can dig but you might need to just find the sweet spot just keep repositioning and so we're coming in here to get some rum because Lucia drives a hard bargain she needs some rum we have a lot in common me and Lucia she will not tell you anything without rum so firstly I'm gonna save just here because there is a boulder that will come forward when you take a few steps forward so it's easier to jump to the left hand side of the slope because there's more room there because sometimes you can slide down the slope on the right and just get stuck in the beam and just slide in the same spot forever so here we go jump after the fire there we go and then you do need to jump over this that's in front of you, it's not easy to see. And you've got some spiders in here. Go away. Nipping at my toes. So we want an empty bottle from this room, which is what we're going to put the rum into. And that's just behind the table, and you do need to crouch down to get it. Alright, so this is labelled as, um, I can't remember actually, it's quite funny, <laughs> bottle for non-alcoholics. Even though I think Lucia might be a little bit of an alcoholic if she's not willing to help Lara out for nothing. But we need to fill the bottle and give it to Lucia. But in here we've got a bit of a barrel situation. Whoa. whoa, 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 what even happened? Alright, here we are again. So try to be a bit more careful this time. I have no idea how I messed that up. So just come forward, wait for the barrels to roll by. You got a, a big empty space right here, so that one's pretty easy. And then up the ladder. got a few more spiders in here there we go and uh, sometimes there are hints of what to do there are what's labels in the walkthrough as fireflies in the air and I feel it does make sense to call them fireflies but I don't want you to get mixed up with the flare fireflies so sometimes when I say fireflies I might mean flares sometimes I might mean the specks floating in the air so just please be aware that I, I don't want to confuse you but I might actually just say both so anyway this is a hint that we need to interact with this big rum barrel use the bottle for non-alcoholics there we go and that is now in the inventory as rum so that's automatically in your inventory when you use it. So now we can just take it straight back to Lucia. And the barrels have stopped, which is fabulous. So yes, Lucia will be very pleased with her rum, I'm sure. I know I would be. So to get out of here, you can either jump forward and grab or you can just stand in front of the rum barrel maybe sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't it has worked this time although I think that was more of a, a jump forward and when she's at the top you want to just let go and grab again and she always teleports to one side when you try and shimmy but you do want her to be all the way to one side that's why I said to let go and grab so she doesn't have a footing because when you climb up that rock will push you down otherwise you'll just fall back down so let's give the rum to Lucia you have to put it on the table Ah, 
Ah, you're better than I thought. Don't hold it against me. Just wanted to see what you can do. I've never seen so much rum. <laughs> Most of that is empty. Oh, here. This will open the door to the bayou in the middle of the island. What is beyond the other door? There's an old lair that still gets used every now and then. Right now, it's empty. I'm gonna go back there now. You find me in the tavern. Uh huh. See you. Okay, so now in the inventory, straight after that cutscene, we've got the key to the bayou. And also, you've spotted, we still have some rum. That, for some reason, stays in the inventory. We don't need it anymore, we've used it, but it's still there. So I have a sneaking suspicion that Lara stole some rum for herself. Can't blame her. But now we have the bayou key. But before I go to the bayou, I'm just gonna collect another secret. So you want to come to this tree that's bent over. And on the ground, there is an X marks the spot. So this is where you want to dig. So when digging, you might need to just readjust, realign, turn around a bit. It's a bit pernickety. And you do often need to bend down to pick up what you've dug up, because otherwise she just walks on the spot. <laughs> it's a bit annoying. But now, we can use the key. Okay. So the bayou is actually a completely separate level. So you do get a load screen. So that's helpful if you happen to take a, a fall or lost a bit of damage. So to get into the bayou, we need to open the underwater hatch there. And to do that, we need to just hop across as you can see just there and climb a bit just to stop the rope from swinging so much also sometimes it might help not to be right at the bottom of the rope it's it can be hard to tell but when you swing into this gap you want to be to the right hand side it's just easier to land into the gap and grab in the air because it just helps there you go just make your way past the blades there and just around the corner is the lever that will open the underwater hatch and now we're just going to go straight into the hatch So firstly, because it's a long tunnel and it is actually easy to get stuck on absolutely nothing, I'm going to save. Okay. And there is also a secret in here. So there is a, a spot where you swim downwards and you've got a choice of left or right from there. If you go to the right, there is the secret and left would be the... Uh, actual path. So here we go, swimming down and to the right in the tiny gap is the secret and it is difficult to come out of the gap so be aware of that. So from the secret just go straight on. Uh, oh, that was pretty good. So yeah, I have died a few times just because I'm having so much trouble getting out of that gap. Okay. Now you can sprint through these darts, they are not poisonous. They just take off a tiny bit of health. And in the box to the left there are some fireflies. And then just round the corner is the load screen for the bayou. Alright, so just continue along into the water. And look! at how stunning this area is. This is so pretty. But you see a door ahead. So we need to open the door. There's two levers to pull. One is right here. And the next one is straight across. So I do love these underwater areas. They look amazing. 
my apologies if I sound a bit funny and bunged up. I'm recovering from a cold. <laughs> it's been a pretty nasty cold. Okay. A bit croaky as well, so I think it'll just sound a bit odd. So also in this area, there is another secret down in this greenery. Just a little gap in the wall, and this is the SpongeBob secret. There you go, that's why I called it the SpongeBob secret. And I think there was a starfish there to go with him. <laughs> Just an average starfish, no fancy face. <laughs> Also in the water there is a bottle of fireflies, so that's just on a ledge, so you're just looking out for that ghostly looking seahorse just there. And that's where the fireflies are. Here we go. And next just hop out here. Okay, so we've got a baboon that's all locked up and we want to get him out so he will pull that lever for us. So the lever to get him out is right at the end there, but you can see there's a, a spike trap on the ground. We need to find a crab item to place on the image on the ground and that will deactivate the spikes. So we're going to do that now. So straight beneath there is a passage. Just follow it around. There's this point here, it trolls you into thinking you, you can go right, but it, that's a dead end straight away. <laughs> I always fall for it, don't know why. Come on, Laura. I didn't even press the roll button. I'm gonna die in the water. I knew it. <laughs> so easy to get stuck on absolutely nothing. Okay, here we go. Now we've got some a uh, prickly situation with some sea urchins, so you just want to jump over them to the empty space. So you might just catch your toes. It's easy to not take damage. Oh, that got her. Never mind. She's all right. <laughs> There we go. And now we're straight into the water and here are the crabs. There is only one we can pick up and that is the one that is not moving, which is this one. So it's called Crabby. And now we can put it straight back to the baboon. Let's hop back over these sea urchins. Right. Okay. Cool. Cool beans. Whoop. So yeah, this tunnel can be tedious, but it's not as bad as the first. Oh, there we go, that's where it's gonna fall you. Yeah. So this way, and here we are. All right, don't worry, buddy. We're gonna get you out. So place the crabby on the crab symbol. All right.
So now uh, you actually do kind of need to go near him to make him climb up and pull the lever. It is a bit funny. Come on. It can be temperamental. So if you go near him, he might wander off towards... There we go. No! The other way! <laughs> oh, he's going to do the thing. Yeah, he's doing the thing. The other way. No, he's stuck. Oh. Well, the way to get past this, if he's not doing anything, is unfortunately to kill him. I don't like doing it. it. Makes me sad. Oh, sorry. But then pull the lever twice. Most of the time he doesn't play up, but there is the rare occasion where he does. Alright. You best not play up for me. Come here. Bit further. Go on. A little bit further. Hey! No, the other way. There you go! So as you can see, that's opened a door on the opposite side where we entered. So let's go straight to that. You can see the hole in the wall where we entered the area. But just climb up here and the door is straight ahead there. But this jump can take a few attempts because it's slightly sloped. You want to uh, run and jump and grab, but you want to grab a bit more to the right because it's slightly lower down and she will more likely grab it. There we go. So you might be struggling with that for a bit if she's not going to grab. And before I go through the door, just take a right because there is a secret just here. There we go. And there we have a signature from the creator of the level, so that's quite cool. And now through the door. Okay, so we do just need to move these skulls into place and then the door will open. And the skulls need to be facing the center. So you can just see the door there. That's the door that will da, 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 da. That will open. This funny looking thing does not do anything, but that might just be for decoration. So first two are pretty simple. And then the next one you just have to take it a little bit further. Alright, so now the chamber has opened and you've got this big chest at the back that you can interact with. It's the only thing you can inter interact with. <gasps> and inside we collect a an amulet and the lair key. We finally have the lair key so we can use that now. So with the amulet we won't use that until right at the end of the game so that's going to be with us for quite a while. 
But now you just make your way straight back to the pirate lair so we can use the key. So, funny thing is, Lucia said that she was going into the pirate lair, but uh, couldn't really take Lara with her, I suppose. Lara had to find the key, or a different key, because obviously Lucia has a key. Bit suspicious. She's a funny woman, I suppose. Okay, so this is the long annoying passage. So just be aware that there is the secret gap that you might go into. I can't remember whereabouts it is now. Well, there it is. If you go that way, that was the secret, but you'll want to go this way. Okie dokie. Now up to the lair, the pirate lair. Cool beans, here we are. Just use the key. And now we can go into the pirate lair. But I won't do that this time. This is where I'm going to end the video now. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Take it easy guys.